Hey guys, a very warm welcome to another guide. Feel free to check out the playlist with all the guides for all the classes in Rebels, so if you want to know how to play a class and need some advices, feel free to check it out. Today we are going to check out the Overlord. The Overlord is a class which is in the Asura area. After you choose to be a Asura, you will have to become a Summoner, then become a Battle Summoner, and in the end get to the master class, which is the Overlord. Usually the Overlord is one of the most famous classes in whole Rebels, because especially on the official servers it's in my opinion the only class which you really cannot play. And in most of the private servers at least it's not maybe not the strongest, but still a very strong one, which can solo kill almost every dungeon which it enters. In the first move we're going to have a look on the skills of the Overlord and for this we're going to open the skill menu. One thing which is already coming in the first class and counts for all the Azura races, for example the Overlord, the Chaos Magician or even the Slayer or Dead Eye, is that they got some passives like the Avoidant Expert which makes your evasion higher and as well there is a second passive skill which is the Evasive Resilience and this one is increasing the maximum HP by 830% of your evasion and as well increase your maximum mana by 160% of your evasion, which in general means that the Overlord should try to get as much evasion as he can. It shouldn't be the skill which you focus on, but it's something where you have to pay attention to when it comes to the selection of some skills or equipment. Checking the Overlord skills, there are some which are very important, for example the Summon Mastery, where you of course need some kind of skill card to avoid the big mana costs. As well it has a healing skill, which is maybe not the strongest, but at least a very good healing skill. A very interesting skill is the Mastermind, which comes to count when you go to Electric Synergy. As well you're getting a stun, which is an AoE stun, which stuns your opponents. And one of the most important buffs from the Overlord is the Double Attack Shang's buff, which is called Swift Impact. Another strong skill is the Fervor Aura, the Lion's Claw, which honestly I don't use that much, but it is still a strong skill. Then you got the Aura of Inspiration, Might of the Underworld. And if we go back to the Battle Summoner area, we will find some more of the self buffs, for example, the Aura of Hellisher, the Spirit Aura, or the Blood Aura. Now, having a deeper look into the buff, I will just show you them, switching to my buff gear for them. Aura of Inspiration, for example, is increasing some of your basic skill points by almost 100. Adds some luck, which honestly your pets don't need the luck, because for the drop rate, the luck of the character counts. It adds some P-Attack, Magic Attack, which are not that important. And as well, it adds some HP. The next buff is coming with the next buff set. And it's the Swift Impact. Swift Impact, it increases your double attack chance, so for example your pixie hits a target, it adds an additional chance of 30% to make a double hit, so the damage doubles. And the most important buff from the Overlord, which you can't buff to other pet classes, but only can buff to your own pets, it is the Fervor Aura. Now you can see there are two buffs which appeared. The one is a normal buff which increases the critical power by a very strong amount. The HP and the PAP attack, but those one are not really important. And on the other side it increases the attack speed and the cast speed, the PPs and the MPs, which are kind of strong buffs as well. If my Overlord is just the total character in a dungeon party and it does not really need to attack and just standing there and give his toggle, then I usually go to the buff set of the Aura of Hellisher, which increases your strength, vitality, agility, dexterity, intelligence, wisdom, Fun fact, only intelligence got the abbreviation here and all the other skills are in the full length. Well, uh, all them, it increases by 14.9%. It adds a lot of luck, which again, the pet honestly don't need. And it adds critical power by 20 and more present. Coming back to the skills, here's still some important skills and the ones which I want to show you are the Unholy Synergy, the Electric Synergy and the Blood Synergy. They all are very strong passives which increase the stats of your pets a lot. This one, for example, it increases your vitality of your creature by 50% of your power. 
which gets very interesting in combination with the with the blood synergy, which increases your strength of your creature by 100% of your personal strength of your character. This one you can get some. And then on the other side, we've got the electric synergy. Electric synergy is the counterpart to the blood synergy. Blood synergy mainly is for pets like the wind pixie or the blood slaughterer, while the electric synergy is something which you can use for Hector or the ethereal pixie. Electric synergy as well got a very good synergy with the one of the talent point skills which is the mastermind. Mastermind increases your own intelligence by 35% while the electric synergy increases the creature intelligence by 100% of the avatar intelligence. Now it's the time that you need to decide which kind of pets you would like to play. For example on the one side you get the wind pixies which are very strong in auto attacking, got a very strong DOT, but mainly are doing the attack with the auto attacks and the double attacks. In this case, and honestly, this is the case which most of the overlords are going to, because it's very easy, you will try to go to blood synergy, which means you're getting blood synergy on your armor, on your gloves, on your boots, and on your emblem. What you can see as well is that the emblem, for example, it got its additional power of 24 strength, as well as all of my accessory. This one is going for the sky strength, as well as for additional 54 strength by the ring itself. The next one is 50 strength, followed by 39 plus 10, so 49 while the next one is going for 42, wasn't that lucky with this one. And the next one is going 22 plus 33, which is 55 in the end. Since we're already going to show the equipment, please have a look. Here is just a normal helmet. It is going with strange and intelligence stones. A dragon coat, which is still not plus 25. It got maximum HP as the bonus, because honestly most of the things which get a bonus on this are not that important for the overlord class. The gloves are some critical power which is not needed because it's not transferred to your pets and your pets are the only ones who are doing damage. And the boots, here you can pay attention because I like to go for a perfect block rate for move speed and evasion. Evasion because it adds more HP, move speed because you're faster and perfect block because it's very interesting for PvP if you can block a lot of the hits which arrive you. As well, the Overlord is kinda special because it don't really need lava decoration, it can use the normal decoration, which for example I took the cowboy hat and added strange stones here again, here again, here again. And this is one way to do the Overlord. The other way is to go for the electric synergy instead of the blood synergy. This means you will have to use Hector or I think personally better is the ethereal pixie. And then you're going for the electric synergy, which means a change to your soul stones, because in the case of the blood synergy, you're going for two times strange, one time intelligence. In case of the electric synergy, you will change it and have two times the intelligent and one time the strange. Having a look to the belt pets, of course you need a plus 25 Yoshiva belt, which gets additional bonus to your boss cards and the cards which are in your belt. I'm around with the Minotaurus at level 3, level 4, and level 3. This is one of the ways which you can go. Of course there is still others, which are linked in the description. The next one is the Naga, it's stage 5. So it gives me the maximum amount of intelligence which is possible. And this is with a stage 5, it is 20%. Why am I doing this? Because the Overlord needs strength and intelligence. And so I try to get the maximum of strength and then the maximum of intelligence, but intelligence I won't reach it. So I will try just to get as much as I can. Now we're going to go to the boss cards, which are the Magma Golem, the Devil Slaughterer, and the stone gargoyle. Especially for PvP you can change in the boss cards a lot, but for a player versus enemy when you're fighting mobs in the dungeons, this combination seems to be the best I found yet. One big question people always ask is, it is worth to use Might of the Underworld buff 
To answer this, we open one of our pets and our own character description, checking the skills, activate the Might of the Underworld skill, and we will see it increases the HP and the power of both. The question why people ask, is this good? Might of the Underworld, it increases your own strength and vitality by 44%. While taking this from one of your pets, it takes down minus 44 and minus 44 strength vitality and transfers it to your character. But as we learned today, the, the Overlord, it got some very strong passives, which will take the power from this buff and turn it back in a way bigger way to your pet. So the answer, in my opinion, yes, you should try to use Might of the Underworld and get the best card, plus 10, which you can get for it. The next question will be, which equipment will your pets need? And I will go for the Wind Pixie in this case. The Wind Pixie, you can see I'm working with two times Wind Pixie on this character. It will have a Dragon Hammer, which is a maze. It should try to get the most critical power possible. It should get P-Attack bonus and Strange bonus. And it should try, if you can, to reach the attack speed bonus and the evasion bonus. As well, I'm using a shield. As well, I'm using a shield which tries to go for awakenings with strange as much as you can. So this one got the awakenings, it got the strange, the intelligence, the magic attack, the P attack, the P attack flat bonus. It got accuracy to hit better, but honestly, that's not always needed. It got the perfect block rate and it's got a lot of critical power. The other shield is still not the best at missing some points so it's not full on strange and int but it, as well it's adding magic attack p attack flat p attack accuracy critical rate which is not needed perfect block rate and critical power the next field is still empty because i haven't prepared this character enough but you will try to use depending on which combination you're going to play you can put an earring or a necklace into here necklace for more power and an earring for more defense you can as well go for one defense and for one attack and make the one the attack pad and the other one the defense pad which only tanks the artifacts should be critical power because since some epics this game is only built on critical power to try so try to get as much as any possible and the last one i am using the yoshiva belt because it adds 20 percent damage and reduces the damage which you get by 10 percent of course there are still other possibilities for example working with clocks or other things but this one is the one which got the most power for the cheapest price and since there shouldn't be a video which is not showing the power of the class which i just was describing i found some video on youtube because i deleted my last recorded scenes And so sadly I have to go to YouTube and checking the videos of two people for the one Cybo on the channel Cyberred. Link to the channel in the description and we will just have a look on how he is fighting with his ethereal pixies in the Devil Dome dungeon. And after that we will switch to a video which goes for wind pixies and their damage in the sky dungeon. As promised, here comes for number two, a video of a player on the same server. He's running around with wind pixies on his overlord and is trying to farm the sky dungeon. And if you want to see some of the possible damage, but I'm pretty sure the damage still can be higher, you can check this video. I would let it run for one minute or two. And of course, as well, the channel Maras and the channel of Cyberrat. Both are linked in the description, so feel free to give the channels a visit and give them a subscribe if you like the content. 